Okay, so here we have the practice test, which means that you have a test next class. The first part is graphing. Now, graphing, this is an exponential function. You can know what the graph looks like or just make a table of values. So real quick, 3 to the 0 power is 1. Uh, 3 to the first power is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Go ahead and plot those, and you already know that it's exponential growth, and your asymptote is at y equals 0. For the next problem, you have the same parent graph, so you're going to have the same points, except this shifts your graph, the number with the x, shifts it the opposite of what you think. So this will shift it right to and down 5 units. So I'm going to take all of my original points here and shift them right to down 5. Right to down 5. Right to down 5. That's how I would do it. If you don't like that, you could still always make a table of values. So plug some numbers in. Let's just plug in, you know, you could plug in um, any numbers you want. I want to see what number would make this 0. So I plugged into a 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So now I have 3 to the 0 power is 1. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. So at 2, negative 4. And then you could plug in 3, 4, whatever numbers you wanted there. Okay? This next one, not extra credit, a logarithmic graph. So I don't know what this graph looks like. I do know that the inverse graph would be like y equals 3 to the x, but it got shifted somehow. So I know that y equals 3 to the x, which is the same graph I just did up here, that's this. Well, the inverse of that is y equals log base, 3 of x. It takes all of these points and shifts and flips them, okay? So this is y equals log base 3 of x. Well, then what does this do to your graph? Oh, okay, this is going to take all your points and shift them right 4 and up 2. So it takes all of these points, the, zero, the 1, 0, right 4, up 2. This one, the 3, 1, the right 4, up 2. And then this one, 9, 2, right 4, up 2. And that is your logarithmic graph. Normally, this one would have an asymptote at um, x equals 0. But since it got shifted, it's going to have an asymptote at x equals 4. And again, that's a vertical asymptote because it's logarithmic. Um, also, if you're having trouble, you can always, you know, enter this onto your Desmos calculator. Now, this one says, tell me if these are growth or decay. Well, your base is going to determine if it's exponential growth or decay. If it's a fraction less than 1, it's exponential decay. And if it's a number greater than 1, it's exponential growth. So, fraction less than 1, decay. This one, your base, is whatever has the exponent next to it. So your base is actually 2, not 1 third. So this is exponential growth. This one, it looks like it's decay because it's a fraction, but it has a negative exponent. And that negative exponent switches it, so this is actually exponential growth. Again, your base right here is the number next to the x. It's 6 fifths. It is a fraction, but 6 fifths is greater than 1. So that is exponential growth. All right, from here they want you to change one from exponential to logarithmic. So that's like changing something from a fraction to a decimal and vice versa. You can remember the rule if you remember on our notes. Well, I think I wrote it wrong on our notes. So it is the logarithmic form here. You have a to the y equals x. Um, I always don't remember the rule. I just remember the example. And your example says... 2 to the 5th is 32. You can rewrite it as log base 2 of 32 equals 5. And that's how I remember it. Okay, 2 to the 5th is 32. So we're going to take this one. Log base, your base is 3. Y, the 5th. So 3 to the 5th equals Y. This one is already in logarithmic, so I'm going to do it to exponential. Logarithmic, I just remember that little cycle. 4 to the y equals 50. S same thing. 
logarithmic. So this is going to be y to the x equals 13. Let me get the, okay, so this one is your exponent rule, and this one is here. It says it if you have an exponent, it lets you actually bring that exponent down in front or vice versa, bring it up or bring it down. So in this case, if the exponent is here, you're going to bring it in front, so it's x log 5. The 2 is in the front, you're going to bring it back up, log y squared, bring that exponent down, 5 log y. Now these properties are probably the most useful when you go to solving equations. And that's gonna be all of these right here. It says, if you have two things that are being added, you can simplify it and just multiply those two if you have the same base. And you can actually go both ways. You can expand it or condense it. If you have two things that are being subtracted, you can just rewrite it as a division problem. If you have two things uh, with that, or if you have the exponent, you can bring that exponent down in front. We just did that. And then if you have log base of m equals log base of n, then you can say m and n are equal. All right, so let's just do this first one. So it is subtraction. Subtraction means division. So log base 2, 6 divided by x. That's it. Again, if this was a number like 3 or something, um, you would have simplified it, but it doesn't simplify this next problem, first thing you're going to do is bring your exponent to backwards. So this is log base 2, 3 cubed minus, bring the exponent back up, log base 2, x to the fourth. Simplify that, so you get log base 2, 27. And then this is still subtraction, so subtraction you're going to just rewrite it as a division problem. All right, try this one on your own. Hit the pause video or hit the pause button. First thing you're going to do is bring the 7 up. This one stays the same and bring the 4 back up. Okay, so you just bring those exponents up. This is addition. So addition means multiplication. And again, you could write it in any order. Why the 7th times 3 times x to the 4th, but... It's usually numbers and then your variables in alphabetical order. All right. And... All right. The next one is the exponents. Now the exponents, they're just going to simplify, you know, normally. E is a number, not a variable here, but you treat it the same. They simplify like a variable. So 3 goes into 36 12 times. If you have e to the ninth on top and 1e e on the bottom, 1e e cancels and you're left with 8 on the top. Here, you're going to distribute that 3 to everything. So 4 cubed and then e to the negative 15x. Well, 4 cubed is 64. e to the negative 15, you're not allowed to have negative exponents. So what do you do with negative exponents? You bump them to the bottom and when you bump them to the bottom, you make that exponent positive. Next one. So I'm going to show you the long way. Don't write this down because there's a faster way. So third root of a e to the 12th. Break it apart. So I, you know, this is 2, 2, 2. Um, I have 12 e's written out. Because it's to the third power, I'm looking for groups of 3. There's my group of 2. So I have uh, 3 2's. So I pull out a 2. 3 e's. Pull out an e. 3 e's, pull out another e, 3 e's, pull out another e, 3 e's, pull out another e, simplify it, my answer is 2 e to the fourth power. The faster way to do it is to say, well, third root of 8 is 2. This is the same thing as e to the 12 thirds. e to the 12 thirds reduces to 4. If you had had an improper number, like uh, 13 over 3, then it would have been e to the 4th, and you still would have had an e under the 3rd group. But you can always just draw it out as well. Okay, moving on. This next part, we have all the equations. Um, you don't have to memorize because you'll have access to them, but make sure you guys know which ones are. It says... 
If the equation is not given to you in the problem, then you're gonna pick one of these. So like on this last one, they actually give you the equation. So if they give you an equation in a problem, then don't worry about the other ones, just use whatever equation they give you. All right, um, there you go. So what equations are these? So this one is compound. This is continuously compounded. So it's continuous and it's compound. Um, this one is just exponential growth. That's your basic one or exponential decay. These are actually the same ones with the plus if you're doing exponential growth and ones with the minus if you're doing exponential decay. All right, so the first problem says um, you have to read it and then figure out which equation you're using and then figure out all the parts. So find the amount of money in an account after eight years if a person invests uh, blah, compounded semi-annually. Compounded. They did not say continuous. So because they did not say continuous, it's this equation. Okay, went ahead and wrote it down. Next thing you want to know is what are they asking you? Find the amount of money in the account after eight years. So they want to know the, the total. Most of the time they want this answer, but sometimes, oh, well, how much money should I invest if I want to end up with, you know, like $50,000 in three years, whatever. So most of the time it's this one, but not always. So make sure you read your problem. And then plug in your variables. P stands for the principal amount, starting amount. So there you go. One plus your rate. Your rate is as a decimal. This is 3.75. 3.75% as a decimal is 0.0375. Number of times compounded semi-annually is gonna be twice a year. So two times eight, plug it into your calculator and whatever you get. Now you can plug it on all in one. I went ahead and just did it in pieces. So you can see that I did, and especially if you have a calculate, um, your cell phone, don't, I don't think your cell phone would do it all together. The first thing you wanna do is this division. Part. So this is 0 0.0375 divided by 2, add the 1 to it, raise it to the 16th power, so it's 1.34. Lots of times students will do this and then multiply it by this and then raise it. That's not, that's bad math. It's parentheses, exponents, then um, multiplication, okay? So I think the answer is here. All right, I'm gonna plug it in all in and just to make verify that I did get that correct. That went light. And again, if you have the nice calculator, you can plug it all in exactly how you wrote it down and get that answer. Students um, tend to get this these problems wrong, not because they did any of this um, incorrect, it's literally because they just plugged it into their calculator wrong. So make sure that you do know how to plug that into your calculator. Okay, the next problem is, Find the value of 15,500 deposited for eight years in an account paying 5% annual interest compounded continuously. Because it said compounded continuously, it is going to be this equation. Go ahead and write that down. So again, continuously compounded, wrote down the equation and then they wanna know how much I end up with. My principal amount is 15,000. E is a number, not a variable. Your interest rate is 5%, 5% as a decimal, 0 0.05, and the amount of time was for eight years. So I went ahead, plugged that straight into my calculator right there, and I got 23000 dollars Now, if you don't have the calculator, then to plug this into your phone, I would just do this little piece. Um, so it's going to be the exponent first and then uh, e to that power and then multiply by 15,000. So here I went multiplied um, 500 times 8 is 4 tenths. So e, or you already know that, e is a button on your calculator. I think it's in your cell phone too. So e to the 0 0.4, 1.49. If you don't have that, e is approximately 2.71 and then uh, raised to the 0.4 and I'm gonna take that number and then multiply it by, so this right here is about 1.5, 1.49, I'm gonna multiply it by 
Now, because I used 2.71, it's actually gonna be a little bit different. So if your numbers are a little bit off, it could be a rounding error, um, if especially, well, for different reasons. So it could be just a rounding error, what numbers you, you used. So if you got, that would be fine. And again, you wanna show your work so that I can um, see if it's a rounding error or if you entered it wrong. All right, next problem. How much money must be deposited now? So how much money should I invest now in an account paying this much to have a balance of $60,000 after 10 years? Okay, so which equation do I use? This is actually a tricky one. All right, compounded quarterly. So write down your equation and let's fill in all the pieces. So this problem is actually backwards. It says, wait, we know this is compounded quarterly, so here's my formula. I want to have a balance of 60000 so that's what you want to end up with. How much money should be deposited now? That's what you're trying to figure out is your principal value. One plus your interest rate, you know what your interest rate is, um, and it's compounded quarterly, so quarterly is four times a year, and for 10 years, so four times 10. This is your equation. And now you're solving for P. Okay, I don't think we've done that type of problem, so let's see how we do it. So first what I wanna do is parentheses. So I'm gonna plug this into my calculator and see what that is. So 0 0.0475 divided by four, add one, um, raise it to the 40th power. So this whole value is about 1.6. The more decimals you keep, the nicer um, or more exact your answer is gonna be. So I'm gonna say it's, So now this is a lot easier. I'm solving this for P, so what do I have to do? Yeah, divide by, so again in your calculator you could say um, 60,000 divided by 1.6 or by my whatever number I used. So, okay, and then you can plug that back in and check. So you should invest $37,000 now in order to end up with $60,000 in 10 years. Again, that's an interest rate at 4.75. All right, the next problem. How long, this is also a really good problem, definitely, I probably both of these would be on your test. Okay, how long will it take you to double your money if you deposit 8,000 now at 6% compounded quarterly? So again, it's still compounded quarterly. Let me write the formula down, set it. So I wrote the equation down. Now let's think about what I know. How long will it take you to double your money if you deposit Oh, and again, it was uh, compounded quarterly, so if you deposit $8,000, so that's my principal amount, and write a little bit small on this one because this problem's going to be long. One plus your interest rate, 6%, so that's going to be 0 0.06. Number of times compounded, it's compounded quarterly, so I know it's four times. And four T, how long? I'm solving for time, so T is your variable. Well, I can't have two variables. I can't have this one here and another variable here. How long will it take you to double your money? You actually know how much money you're gonna end up with. How much money would you end up with? if you're gonna double your money. Yeah, 16,000. So this is your equation right there. You invest 8,000, you wanna double it, so you end up with 16,000, 6% interest rate compounded quarterly. Okay, so there's your problem, how do you solve it? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is, 
isolate your variable. So you want to get rid of what? Clean this up and you want to get rid of this 8,000. So divide by 8,000 on both sides. So 2 is equal to whatever that is. Use my calculator, 0 0.06, um, oops, 0 0.06 divided by 4, added 1, and I get 1.0. Okay, so now, now what? I'm solving for t. Do I fourth root it, four t it, what do I do? So the whole reason we did this unit is because to bring down a exponent power, you can actually take the log of both sides. So you take the log of this and the log of this. What that allows you to do is that now you have a problem, log two equals, lets you bring your exponent in front, four t log, 1.015. We're solving for t, so we're going to divide this by log of 1.015. And it's not, be careful, this is not log 2 divided by 1.0. It's log two divided by the log of 1.05. So log two divided by log of 1.015 is 46. Okay, so that cancels. We plug that into our calculator and that's kind of hard to see. Okay, the last thing you're gonna do is you're solving for t, so you're just gonna divide that by four on both sides. And it says it'll take you about more than about 11 and a half years. So 11.6, and we should label this. It is, yeah, years. Okay, and then again, you could plug this back in to check your answer to make sure that you were right. So let me plug it in and see. 